What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy. Welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, this is another one that piqued my interest right before the other one I posted yesterday. Uh, that one was really juicy if you guys haven't seen that one the origins of shy guy that was phenomenal honestly i didn't expect it to be that crazy no one just shy guy <laughs> but it was pretty cool and it made sense but this is another one from you know dr bob himself for this scp it seems like it could be a little bit more sinister so this is scp 705 militaristic play-doh so it could be honestly goofy and not too crazy but there could be an upside where it's pretty juicy so with that being said we're going to dive deep into it today so if you guys do enjoy this reaction please let me know by smashing that like button again let's try to get 100 likes on this one and also if you haven't subbed to the channel already it behooves you to do so especially if you enjoy my reactions i have over 300 reactions on the channel of scp content so this is going to be the best place to be to get your fix of SCP heat. So without all the way, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get this show started. Alrighty, SCP-705, Militaristic Play-Doh. Let's go. The sun rises over the battlefield. The American flag flaps gently in the wind. Okay. The world is silent. A war? Bang. The door slams open, and the boy runs out of the house, <laughs> oh making plane God. noises with his mouth. Ted's imagination. The toy bomber in his hand oh. arcs and soars dipping and diving as it makes its imaginary bombing run around the backyard, over the sandbox, swooping low through the thick grass, past the pond, under the swing set, and up, up, and away into the sky, climbing higher and higher in the direction of the treehouse with its American flag flapping in the morning breeze. What a perfect day. The boy breathes in the air deeply and looks around. His shoulders slump. He's bored already. Two <laughs> seconds in the yard and he's already bored. What is there to do out here that he hasn't already done? You're playing by yourself. He's laid in the sand, he swung on the swings, he's climbed up to the treehouse. He hears the car engine kicking into life. Man, I always I was always envious of kids that had, you know, tree houses when they were younger. Because I always thought it was an actual thing that you just see on TV, but like some kids actually had that, like in their backyard. I was always jealous. I always wanted one of those. Life somewhere out front. His dad's voice carries over to him on the breeze. I'm running late for work. I'll see you later. If you find my bag anywhere, don't go looking inside of it. Just tell me where it is when I get home. <laughs> Love you. Bye. The wheels crunch through the gravel driveway, and the engine sound slowly fades into the distance, leaving the boy alone in the backyard again, with nothing but the wind for company. You didn't even know that he heard you. You just literally got out of your car and just said that and dipped off. You didn't even wait for a response. <laughs> Great. Now he's got to find something to do for the whole day. He throws the toy bomber to the ground in frustration. Mm. A wing snaps off and bounces away into the flower Dang. bed. Dang. Uh-oh. He'll need to fix that before Dad gets home. Goofy. Super glue. That'll do the trick. There must be some inside. His dad is always fixing things. If I would have done that, I wouldn't have got a toy next. <laughs> that would have been my toy for the next five years. <laughs> but the boy's mission is almost immediately sidetracked. As soon as he steps into the house, he spots his dad's bag right by the back door, where he always forgets to look. The boy looks at it curiously for a moment. Mm. He wonders what's in there that his dad told him not to look at. He'll just have a little peek. Not a proper look. He won't even open the bag all the way. Just a little look inside. If anyone asks, he'll say he was looking for super glue. Wait, what's that? It can't be. A little pot with a red lid and big cartoonish letters on the side. What the? Play-Doh. What's his dad doing with a pot of Play-Doh in his bag? <laughs> he thought his dad had a really grown-up job. That's what his mom always says. <laughs> His dad has a very secret grown-up job, very important, very secret. Is that Yo, does his dad work for the SCP Foundation? And that's one of the SCPs he was supposed to take to the facility that he forgot? Yo. Really what he does at work all day? Play with Play-Doh? The boy is far too grown up for Play-Doh. Oh he hasn't goodness. played with it for years because it's for babies. No way is he going to play with it now. Nope, he's a big boy who plays with real toys. But still, a little look won't hurt. He'll take it out, squeeze it in his hands a bit, remember how babyish it is, and put it back. He definitely isn't going to play with it. The boy pops the red lid off and peers inside. Yep, just as he thought. Boring. He's gonna play Just with a it. lump of red putty. Sitting there being all... all boring. <laughs> but as the boy tips the pot out into his hand, it feels a bit weird. Mm. It moves a little in his palm. Is there an insect inside it or something? It feels like a pair of little legs. The heck? He rolls the lump over into his other hand and peers at it. Yes, a pair of legs sticking out from the red ball. Only, they're not insect legs at all. Yo, I, if I was him, I would have dropped that and stomped on it so fast. Like, I'm surprised he's so chill about it. They're tiny, about the size of insect legs, but there are only two of them. They're totally red, matching the color of the Play-Doh. 
and seem to have a tiny pair of boots on the ends of them. The legs wiggle around helplessly, sticking up into the air, until all of a sudden, a hand appears sticking up out of the clay. Oh, God. It looks like a tiny person has somehow been buried in the Play-Doh upside down. The hand gets a good grip on the red ball and pushes and pulls at it, steadily freeing the rest of its body until suddenly a fully formed tiny man pops out of the surface. Roughly the size of the boy's fingernail, Dang. the little red man stands up straight and takes in his surroundings. Not only is the tiny person wearing boots, he's also got a backpack and a helmet on his miniature head, all made of Play-Doh. In fact, this tiny person looks just like one of those little green army man toys that his dad had when he was little. The little soldier looks up and sees the boy staring down at him, jumping back in fright. Oh, the wow. Laughs. He guesses he must look pretty scary to someone so small. He smiles at the little army man. The little army man very slowly lowers himself down to his knees, reaching down to the Play-Doh floor he's standing on. Is he going to get his gun? <laughs> he's going to pop him? His little red hand seems to be feeling around for something in the putty. Yo. In fascination, the boy stares closely as the Play-Doh under the soldier's hand morphs into the shape of... What is that? A gun. The soldier lifts the boy. tiny red rifle to his shoulder and points it straight at the boy's eye. He fires, and to the boy's surprise, something comes out. A stream of teeny tiny Play-Doh bullets pepper his eyeball. <laughs> the boy throws the Play-Doh ball as hard as he oh can and God. blinks hard. A tiny scream goes with it. The bullets didn't really hurt that uh -oh. much, Did but his kill? eye is a little watery now. The tiny soldier has a real working tiny assault rifle. He's starting to understand why his dad is still playing with Play-Doh. Oh my God. Even though we know it's most likely his dad works for the SCP Foundation, regular kids wouldn't know that, but it would make sense. I mean, if something like that was a real thing, any adult will play with it. Where did that Play-Doh go? He must have thrown it into the backyard. The boy runs outside and looks around. There it is, just next to the sandbox. Dang, he threw that he creeps far? up to the ball cautiously, trying to see if the little soldier is still there. Wait, hang on. There he is. No, there he is. Is that another one? He kneels and peers at the small crowd gathering around the ball. He can't quite believe what he's seeing. Dozens of little men are milling around the red ball, with more marching out of it in formation <laughs> oh every God. few seconds. Little red Play-Doh tents are being erected Yo. in a perimeter around the ball. A couple of tiny soldiers chop down a twig with tiny red axes and start a campfire. They're Many working! A red jeep weaves its way through the grass, and a general hops out, with a cowering officer by his side. The tiny general barks tiny orders. It's difficult to hear what the man is saying, but it sounds like he's speaking English, <laughs> only really high-pitched. Oh my god. He points to a group of soldiers who immediately rush over to the ball of Play-Doh and pull a ladder out of it. They rest the ladder against the edge of the sandbox, and a couple of them hurry their way to the top. Climbing up onto the wooden board, the pair of them split up, rifles in hand, checking the area is clear. The general is the next up the ladder. He surveys the yard with a battle-worn wariness, eyes coming to rest on the treehouse. Uh -oh. He pulls out his binoculars and takes a good hard look at it, studying every inch of the tree before spotting the flagpole rising from the top. Lowering the binoculars with evident satisfaction, the general points a tiny hand at the enormous tree and cries out an order at the top it? of his little voice. A high pitch rises from the troops on the ground. They pump fists and slap backs. The army has grown already. As the boy looks back down at the Jeez. platoon gathering in the grass, he sees a dozen more tents have sprung up. A group of soldiers stand in formation around the ball of Play-Doh, keeping watch in every direction. From that little ball of Play-Doh? I, I mean, it seems like it's not coming actually from... It seems like the Play-Doh is probably like just like a portal for them to come out because it doesn't look like the ball is shrinking in size. Because there's a lot of Play-Doh that's being used up for all these soldiers, the tents, the Humvees and everything, the ladder. Like, what the heck? And there, a soldier sits on an acorn crying, helmet in his hands. He weeps openly. There is a red cross on the tent next to him. That must be the medical tent. The boy crouches down on all fours and peers inside the tent. Uh -huh. There, on the tiny red bed, surrounded by tiny red nurses, lies a soldier. His legs are bent out of shape, and he's crying out in pain. A doctor approaches and gives him the bad news. What the hell happened to him? He was just born from the Play-Doh. How did he just get an accident? For readying the saw, oh my goodness. the boy sits back up. He can't watch. A high-pitched cry echoes from the tent, loud enough to dampen the commotion around the rest of the oh my camp. Goodness. The boy recognizes that scream. It's the same scream he heard when he threw the Play-Doh out of the door. That first brave soldier oh. defending his brothers in arms from the giant. What had the boy done? The soldier outside the medical tent picks up the phone and informs the tiny soldier's tiny family what had happened. He had lost both his legs, but not his life. He was a hero. Yo. The battalion is mobilizing. No time to mourn. 
Snipers climb the ladder onto the edge of the sandbox and set up nests all along the wooden beam as trucks rumble through the thick grass below. Let's see. On the other side of the sandbox wall, a desert platoon makes its way through the scorching heat. What the heck? Soldiers sit atop tanks, shaking the last remaining drops of doughy water from their red <laughs> bottles and wiping sweat from their brows. This is funny. All of them heading in the direction of the treehouse. The boy stands up, surrounded by tiny soldiers. He has to be careful where he steps now as they fill the grass around him. A couple of tanks rumble between his feet, flattening the blades of grass as if they were as weak as, well, blades of grass. Are they not aware about this guy? I mean, the first one was aware and shot him. I'm surprised they're not reacting the same way the first soldier that's about to get, you know, his leg amputated acted. <laughs> it's really weird. All of the soldiers, all of the equipment and vehicles, everything is coming from the little ball of red Play-Doh. And little is the right word for it. With every new unit deployed to the front line, the ball shrinks slightly. It's okay. getting smaller and smaller by the minute. Now it's actually shrinking. Because I was about to say it wasn't shrinking before. They're going to need reinforcements. The boy rushes into the house and returns in just a few seconds, arms laden with Play-Doh. <laughs> He's got every pot of it from when he was little. Yo. He pops them all open, one after the other, they work and the same? throws them onto the ground in the midst of the camp. The only slight issue is that all the Play-Doh is that gross brown color that it goes when you mix all the colors together. Hmm. That won't matter, will it? Gunfire breaks out almost immediately below him. The boy jumps back in surprise, stepping on a communications oh mast my by accident. Goodness. Tiny brown soldiers rush out of the Play-Doh walls all around the camp, diving into cover and opening fire on the red soldiers. It's a massacre. Red soldiers taking a rest from the front line, Sleeping. calling their loved ones, getting ready to go home on leave, lying injured in beds. <laughs> all of them are gunned down. What the heck? Most don't even have a chance to grab their rifles. One brave red soldier sprints to the communications mast and tries to radio the rest of the battalion. How is this happening? The brown Play-Doh should be just regular Play-Doh, right? Telling them what's happened, but the mast is destroyed. A stray bullet catches him in the side of his head and he crumbles to the ground, Dang. just a lifeless blob of Play-Doh. The boy watches in horror as a couple of brown soldiers pick up the body and toss it into the nearest ball of brown Play-Doh. A dedicated team of them mix the body in with the rest of the dough until it's that same brown color. From the blob emerges oh no. a new brown soldier. The small red streak running across his heart Yo. is the only sign that he'd ever been a red at all. Dang, they taking bodies. They're taking the dead bodies and making them their own. Yo, that's actually kind of cool. The soldier quickly disappears amongst the mass of helmets and boots, <laughs> trampling any trace of the red army. The whole yard erupts in tiny warfare. Take the red over. snipers lining the walls of the sandbox are picked off one after the other. Oh my God. The desert platoon are ambushed by landmines and quickly surrounded, hiding in broken down tanks as plumes of sand are thrown up all around them. They're getting embodied. Bro, how does this even happen? They had their whole setup formed, the red soldiers, and then just getting blitzed like this. This is like, must be like some Navy SEAL type brown soldiers. Before long, the brown troops had them completely surrounded. One last soldier bursts out from the hatch in his tank, oh. holding grenades in each hand. The bullet catches him in the head before he can even finish his war cry. Sharpshooters! The grenades explode harmlessly, nowhere near the brown troops. Oh my goodness. The red convoy, on its way to the tree, stands the best chance of survival. The boy follows them with fascination, watching as the brown army fight their way through the red line from the back, splitting it through the middle as their superior firepower makes short work of the transport and supply <laughs> trucks. Oh my goodness. Some red soldiers dive away into the thick grass, climbing up dandelions and weeds in a desperate attempt to escape. Bruh. Few succeed, as the bodies fall back into the mud like raindrops. A tiny screaming noise fills the yard. The boy turns around just in time to jump out of the way of the brown fighter jets. Five of them Yo. streak through the air, almost at his head height. Missiles fire Carpet out of the bombs? bottom of each jet, one after the other, blowing apart what little remains of the red convoy. The gunfire dies down within the hour. Skirmishes break out across the yard as brown patrols pick off the stragglers they find from the red army hiding That's ants crazy. Nests, under fallen leaves and huddling around broken <laughs> down vehicles. The boy watches as several high-ranking officers gather in the brown base uh -oh. to oversee the absorption of the last of the red ball of Play-Doh. Where is the red general? They mold themselves a big meeting table with a brown map of the yard and plot out their strategy for taking the treehouse for themselves, uh, now they moving want around even tinier little model units across the surface of it with sticks. The plan quickly comes together before the boy's eyes and under his feet. A series of mortars and surface-to-air missiles are deployed along the wall of the sandbox. The Air Force takes over the original brown base, chopping down blades of grass and laying out Play-Doh runways flanked with brown hangars. A ring of military units surround the base of the treehouse, strategizing about how best to ascend the colossal structure and reach the flagpole. 
in the pond, an aircraft carrier splashes into the water, marking the arrival of the Navy. Oh my God. The ship is soon flanked by a pair of destroyers armed with anti-aircraft missiles. The boy is about to go over and peer into the water to try and spot a nuclear submarine <laughs> when he comes across a sight for sore eyes. Red soldiers, not much more than a single squadron, uh -oh. hunkered down around the base of the swing set. They've covered themselves in dirt and little clumps of moss to camouflage. So they must be the forwardmost scout squadron, just far enough away from that original convoy to Yo. escape the slaughter. But what are they doing? The units are all gathered around a pile of leaves. There's something underneath. What is it? It looks like plastic. Your toy plane. Of course. It's his toy bomber with the broken wing. Trying not to draw the attention of the brown army, the boy drops to the ground next to the red units, doing his best to hide in the grass. The red soldiers are arguing amongst themselves. The general is there. He survived. Oh! Barely. Slumped against a blade of grass. The scout's high-pitched arguing is a little too quiet for the boy to make out. Why is the general not leading? He's just hiding like a little, you know what? But come on, bruh. <laughs> it's pretty clear what's going on. The general for a they reason. They need to get the toy plane working. But it'll be hopeless without the other wing. Got the super glue. He lifts his head and looks around the yard. There it is, in the flower bed. But it's surrounded by brown troops. How could the red soldiers possibly fight their way to it and get back unharmed? You can. Oh, wait. The boy just gets up, walks over to the flower bed, <laughs> and picks up the wing. Come on now. In about three seconds, he completes an insurmountable effort for those little soldiers. Kneeling next to them, he offers the missing wing. The scouts all stand back warily. It's the general who climbs to his feet and walks over to the boy. Finally. He looks at the plastic wing, looks up at the giant towering over him, and raises his arm in a salute. Nice. The others follow suit quickly and get to work repairing the toy plane. Brown soldiers notice the commotion and start to close in on them. They don't have much time. The boy stamps out a runway for the soldiers in the grass. The plane is almost ready to go, but is missing one vital piece of the propeller. How did they go? Only there's a bigger problem. Oh, prior player. They're out of red Play-Doh. A brown soldier breaks through the thick grass and rushes towards the squadron, his assault rifle peppering the side of the plane no. with doughy bullets. The scouts all dive into the vehicle and kick the engine into gear. Little red gears and pistons were into life beneath the plastic, but the plane just isn't moving without the propeller. What can they do? The brown soldier stops in his tracks, staring at the plane. The boy peers at him closer. There's a red streak across his heart. Oh, he used to Conflict be red. contorts the tiny soldier's face. The door to the plane opens and out steps the general. The two soldiers face each other on the runway, the red scouts desperately calling the general to get back in. None of them move. The brown soldier raises his rifle and shoots the general <gasps> in the head. The older man crumples to the ground inside the plane. The I scouts... thought he was going to switch teams again, but like, yo, what the heck? I thought he was going to be like, oh, I used to be red. Let me help you guys out. Start to panic. They don't have their guns with them. Oh my the brown goodness. army is bearing down on them from all sides. What can they do? The brown soldier with the streak across his heart walks slowly over to the general's body, stoops down, and picks him up. He carries the body around to the front of the plane and, without a word, starts using the Play-Doh to build them a propeller. Brown soldiers burst through the grass, swarming the runway. They need to leave, now or never. So he was, he's actually on their side. I guess, I mean, if I had to kill someone else and not me, I, I guess I would be the same. The brown soldier places the propeller onto the plane and steps aside as the vehicle roars off along the runway. He salutes the ascending plane as one of his brown compatriots puts a bullet in his chest right through his red Dang. heart. But the plane is already away, lifting off into the sky. The toy bomber dodges and weaves its way between the whizzing bullets. It banks hard, pulling the nose around come inch on, by come inch on, to come face on. the treehouse. The pilot guns it, pulling the tiny stick back sharply. Yo, let's it seems go. to take an age for the bomber to climb. The boy glances behind him just in time to see the brown navy launch their missiles. Oh my goodness. Six of them, all making a beeline for the bomber. Or so it seems. At the last moment, he sticks a hand out and slaps the missiles out of the air. Hey. A couple of them explode, leaving streaks of brown Play-Doh on his hand. The others spiral to the ground where tiny soldiers dive for cover. <laughs> the brown air force scrambles, but it's too late. As the jets shoot across the yard, the bomber has already reached its destination. They made the it? scouts jump out, deploying red Play-Doh parachutes as they circle their way down onto the flagpole. Hey, nice. A jet catches up to the bomber and blows it out of the sky. Sheesh. The scouts don't have time to mourn their lost pilot, or any of their dead for that matter. Quick as they can, they cut the American flag free. As it flutters and floats down to the grass, the squadron unfurls its replacement. Yo. A red rectangle of Play-Doh. They won. a couple of inches across. One of them pulls a bugle from his pack and plays the highest pitch version of the last post you could ever hear. The whole battlefield falls silent to listen 
The boy places a hand over his heart, oh just God. as the first drop of rain hits his shoulder. Chill out, bro. From somewhere inside, his mom's voice calls. It's about to start raining. Come inside before you catch a cold. I'm making cocoa. The boy grins and runs into the house. Okay. Outside, the rain pours, and all trace of the war washes away into red and brown streaks in the dirt. Yo. And with that, you'd be forgiven for thinking that SCP-705 had never even been in that young boy's backyard. Most adults would just dismiss the boy's afternoon entertainment as a figment of a child's imagination, but most adults have not encountered SCP-705, otherwise known as militarized Play-Doh. The results of a redacted megacorporation's research into creating a self-molding product, the specific mechanics of how this militarized Play-Doh was created are hazy to say the least. Mm. What is known is that the small red blob of what appears to be the popular children's sculpting toy exhibits aggressive militaristic tendencies. As soon as the five-ounce pot is opened, SCP-705 activates, forming itself into miniature Play-Doh soldiers. Each unit comes dressed in detailed and accurate military fatigues, carrying miniaturized weaponry and equipment, all of which function identically to their real-life counterparts, aside from one small detail. Everything is made entirely from Play-Doh. Mm. When active, SCP-705 can divide into hundreds of infantrymen, each of which seems to have some level of personal Just autonomy. That level of as of yet, no wow. hive mind mentality has been observed between the soldiers. They all communicate as their real-life military equivalents would, through barking orders, strategizing, and working together. Upon activation, each instance of SCP-705 is highly territorial, seeking to take immediate control of the nearest location or object that seems to be of strategic importance. This could be anything from a coffee machine to a treehouse. What appear to be innocuous household objects to us pose an incredible tactical advantage to the tiny soldiers, many of whom are willing to sacrifice their lives to take control. The longer this militarized well, sure Play-Doh is allowed to roam free, the more advanced the military unit becomes. Leadership figures emerge, battle plans grow more and more advanced, and technology improves. While the Play-Doh may initially take the form of a handful of infantry units, if left to their own devices, these units will soon be riding on the backs of tanks, firing miniguns through the doors of attack helicopters, or even developing rudimentary navies and air forces. And of course, you have seen what happens when SCP-705 comes into contact with a regular pot of Play-Doh. Yeah. The otherwise see. harmless putty will take on the same characteristics as this militarized Play-Doh. Oh. If the two groups of soldiers are the same color, they will form an alliance. If they are different colors, well, that's where the fun begins. Oh, okay, okay, that's cool. Containing SCP-705 is relatively straightforward. Simply gathering all of the Play-Doh together and putting it back into its five ounce pot with the lid closed will neutralize the tiny army entirely. This, coupled with how harmless the tiny, doughy bullets are, means that SCP-705 requires little security. Well, that's easier said than done. Because if they're all split up to like hundreds of soldiers, the like the Humvees, the tents and everything, how are you gonna put all of those back in the, in the little Play-Doh container? What if one soldier escapes or one is hiding and you forget one? Would that soldier still be alive or would that soldier cease to exist because all the other Play-Doh is within the container? Hmm. It is housed in Sector 2 safe SCP containment with the lid closed. The only accidental outbreak that has occurred since its containment has been in the break room when a researcher accidentally left the lid open while they went to the bathroom. Or a second one is when the dad left his instance of this SCP in his briefcase so his son could find. You really want to think he's not going to dig into it and you left it there? Come on, bro. When the researcher returned, all they needed to do to rescue their coffee from the clutches of a crazed Play-Doh general was brush a few soldiers off the counter. Uh, this is a day SCP-705 still talks about often with deep fear and reverence. Oh my god. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-526, Valhalla Gate, for another anomaly that mixes the oh, magical and militaristic. I think. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archive. A little mini Dr. Bob, bro. Yo, okay. That was actually pretty cool. Um, Very, very different. It was like a whole like little story. Like we actually saw a war in front of us. War, Play-Doh War. <laughs> I enjoyed it. it. Wasn't anything like, I thought it was gonna be something more sinister, honestly, but again, it is Play-Doh. Literally when it rained, it washed it away. And that's another question I have. If that happens, how could he put it back in the container? Is is like the SCP dead? Like, did he kill it? Like if it's in the rain, you can't like, once it's wet, like how you gonna be, how's it gonna be Play-Doh again? I don't know, that part's weird. I'm assuming it just dies. 
that's that's pretty sad but um anyway if you guys like this scp and you guys enjoyed this reaction let me know by smashing that like button also let me know in the comment section below were you under the same belief that it might be something a little bit more you know sinister at first but ended up being like this i enjoyed it still regardless but yeah unfortunately though that concludes today's episode however i'll catch you guys on the next one